everyone, this is Gio from Rebalancing Health and today I'm gonna share with you a tip for my friend surfer to how to prevent the lower back pain and reduce the lower back pain if you fall in the category of a kyphotic posture. Uh, I choose uh, kyphotic posture because Again, kyphotic posture is a common posture that a lot of surfers have, and um, and what it comes with kyphotic posture, it comes most of the time upper chest breathing. Um, the relationship between upper chest breathing and your lower back, your lumbar spine, back pain, is that um, the diaphragm attaches to your lumbar spine via tendons um, and upper chest breathing um, doesn't allow the diaphragm to expand and compress um, and consequently um, the rib cage is not mobilized thoracic cage is all uh, the thoracic um, spine is all compressed down and by having an upper chest breathing it means that the diaphragm is not mobilized properly and therefore doesn't expand by pushing down on the viscera by extending uh, decompressing and stiffening the lumbar spine and uh, by by the breathing happening here on the upper side, the body will, uh, will um, adapt um, or utilize upper chest and um, muscle to lift up the rib cage like that. What that does is not only exclusively um, lifting up the rib cage, but it's pulling up the diaphragm and brings and brings an excessive an excessive movement of the lumbar spine which with the on on the long term uh, causes um, hyper flexibility and a hyper mobility of the lumbar spine in particular uh, l4 l5 uh, level which is where those tendon attaches um, so with that said I'm gonna go straight into a breathing technique to you to start retraining the uh, a diaphragmatic uh, or the use of the diaphragm while we're breathing uh, the breathing is done in three in two parts. We do three thirds of our breathing down here on the uh, on the um, on the upper um, upper belly, upper stomach, um, or the abdomen, and the one third we do it in the on the upper chest or on the on the chest. Excuse me, not on the upper chest and we will concentrate to have a nice slow inhalation uh, not a forceful inhalation we will concentrate on the expansion of the belly expansion of the rib cage and then we're gonna end up we're gonna finish by lifting up the rib cage oh sorry the the upper chest in a really slow manner, in a really slow and um, yeah, and a really slow pace. Um, I always give the analogy of a wave. So if a wave lift up, right, is raises up, it lifts it up, and it start to crumble. That's my two third, and the two third of the breathing it finish when the waves breaks the water arrives down at the bottom of the face of the wave the wave is become whitewash and uh, let's pretend that it's close to the shore and so the whitewash and all that force it start to climb up the, the, 
the face of the the shore, but because it's a, in a in a um, steep level, it will uh, reduce the speed and will start to uh, go backwards again. So the the part of the upper chest that what I wanted to say, the part of the upper chest is not a forceful breathing, is only the last part and is a really gentle part. Pretty simple. You can even use a resistant band, a really light resistant band around your uh, rib cage, uh, just to perceive a slight resistance against the rib cage so that you know you are aware of where to push out uh, and uh, uh, at the rib cage level otherwise you can just utilize the hand like I do put one over here on my upper abdomen one on my upper chest, just underneath the collarbone, just right by the collarbone, right here, resting there. It's gonna be a relaxing breathing. So, So that's, as you probably notice, the most of my breath is done in this lower part and then the last bit of my breath is done on the upper part. Again, if I mobilize the rib cage, I utilize the diaphragm, the diaphragm will drop down when we breathe in. By dropping down, it will push down on the viscera, will push down on the digestive system and uh, that create a, an extension and the compression and also uh, the diaphragm is utilized to stiffen and stabilize the trunk if for example if you think about it the, the time that you went to pick up uh, you went to pick up a heavy object like it would be um, a bag of wood, a bag of flour, um, uh, if you are into gardening, <laughs> compost, get, you know what I mean. Um, big piece of wood. When you're leaning over, out of, uh, uh, automatically, when you go and reach and you grab that heavy object, that you stop breathing. You, automatically you do it. Uh, innately you do it. And that's a way that the body utilizes is a, is a preventing is is the body utilizing um, the diaphragm as a stabilizer, which in fact the diaphragm is a stabilizer of the trunk, uh, but innately the body does it. So by doing this breathing, we train in the diaphragm. We the diaphragm is a muscle, so it needs to be trained, it needs to move, otherwise it will atrophy and the consequences are multiple and one is perhaps lower back pain for surfer. So that's one uh, tip. The other tip is uh, lay down on 
on a foam roller with your sacrum and head on the foam roller. Just to open up the arm like this. And you can even do the breathing that I just showed you on the foam roller and just relax over here. Just to help uh, the upper chest to open up. Um, if it's a bit, um, if it's the diameter of the foam roller is a bit thicker, you will feel, and you have a, quite a bit of kyphosis, so you will feel a lot of tension uh, on the chest opening up. And I suggest you to practice just lay down on the, on the foam roller for about two weeks. Um, and do the and practice the breathing. Uh, the reason why I say two weeks on the foam roller is because I don't know who you are and what, how's your health. And sometimes, if we don't, if we are a type of person that we don't really take care of ourselves, even just by drinking enough water uh, throughout the day, the body is made of 70% water. Muscles are made of 70% water. Um, and uh, tissue like a fascia muscle are all need, in need of water if we don't have enough water in our body all the tissue will be that will be uh, tight that will be stiff and and consequently the ability of your of you reversing or adjusting or opening up the chest and reversing the kyphotic posture, it will be a much slower process. And um, if you are one of those person, I suggest you to utilize two weeks just to help the just the force of gravity because by lying down on the on the foam roller to do the work. Because if we start forcing it a little bit too much, we may do some, some unnecessary uh, damage that we don't want. Instead, we want a kind of a natural, um, a natural progression. If you are one person that, a person that uh, is, um, is perhaps is more taking care of more of himself, you can start playing around with the foam roller. Uh, perhaps put it uh, horizontally um, and on your on your thoracic spine you can start breathe in breathe out so that you're creating that uh, movement in the thoracic spine otherwise lay down on the longitudinally uh, for the longitudinal axis of the foam roller that's a really good um re really good point of point of um a starting point <laughs> that's what i mean <laughs> so everyone thank you for watching um reach out if you need any tips and i hope you enjoy my video